is as much a mental challenge as it is physical. The amount of time you spend on the field and at the game, practicing, preparing, can be quite tough. So each player has their own way how they go about it, how they uh, prepare mentally. You so I used to scratch the ground or sort of keep, keep making my mark, which was my way of clearing my mind and, and being able to focus. A, a lot of the time, so if I was making my guard and it was, I'd been batting for a while and it was getting longer and it, a lot of the times the bowlers would actually sort of scuff it up a little bit on purpose. So whenever the opposition did it or whether uh, the wicketkeeper did it, it was just an opportunity for me to refocus, re-emphasize what, what I was thinking. And I enjoyed it when they gave me the opportunity to do, do it again. I think within a side, you're always going to get different individuals with different habits, different ways of thinking and different behaviors. So I, I always thought that's what's unique about playing in a team. Uh, you, you get to have teammates for a while and it's a bit like the workplace. You can have people who think differently. My teammates were you know, accepting that I was you know, very regimented in the way I did. I liked to have my kit organized. At times there was a few jokes, but they understood that that's what I needed uh, and, and, and that sort of environment for me to operate. Because if I was operating well and hopefully setting up games for them to win, you know, they understood what was needed. And everyone's got their own sort of quirks, if you like, to the way that they go about things, think differently about cer different circumstances or situations. Having teams that come up with new ideas and, and can work productively means you have to recognise communication differences and preferences. It's a really funny thing that we categorise people and we put them in nice neat boxes. Our brains actually have 64 billion brain cells all connecting in millions of different ways. So why would we think we've got six or eight categories of the types of people we have? And actually that's what neurodiversity is all about. It's about all of us, it's about our differences, how we think, communicate, act, process information, how we read, how we use numbers as well. We're using different words in this sort of new domain of neurodiversity, and one of them is neurodivergent. Some people sort of talk about it in a negative way. However, we can be positively neurodivergent. Neurodivergent traits are often associated with some conditions that you've probably heard of, dyslexia, autism. Society is set up for the average person. In school, you have a classroom of children all facing the front and they're all learning to read and write and spell. In the workplace, we recruit people in the same way. In fact, the first person to do CVs was Leonardo da Vinci. So it's been around a long time. You have a two page CV, you get 100 CVs coming through. But actually, we keep having the same people applying who can write good CVs. Neurodivergent talent may have really good numerical skills, but they're not good at writing CVs. And then when we come into an interview process, you might exclude people because in the interview, you're judging people by the way they communicate. In the job, they might have really good technical skills, but you're not testing those and you're making assumptions. And also you might be recruiting with your own biases. So you, you actually generate cookie cutters rather than actually have a diverse group of people. Chartered accountants have a really crucial role to play, both with their colleagues and with the senior managers in their client, to help them understand how the decisions they make may improve or impair equality, diversity and inclusion in their businesses. Societal expectations of organisations of all kinds, including businesses, including accountancy firms, are that they, they know, they track, they can understand all kinds of information that relate to diversity, to inclusion and to their people in those decisions that they make. But it's important to get beyond a numbers game. You have not, in my view, become a diverse and open and inclusive business just because you've got the numbers right. You've got to look at what the intent is. You could, for instance, have an entirely female board. But what if all those women think alike? Are there neurodivergent people in this group? Are there people who, who may appear to be from an underrepresented group, but are they thinking differently? Have you got the diversity necessary to generate the right sort of critical questions that board should be asking? As a profession, we've got to embrace diversity because if you're just relying on the perspectives of a single demographic, you're just not going to be very rich in your advice or your practice. <laughs>